We got very sad news of another historic comic book shop, perhaps closing, perhaps moving uh, their shop. We've had a lot of people struggle that have had a lot of success in comic books lately. And here to talk to me about that is my good friend, Doc. What is up, brother? Um, Not too much. You know I, about I, Joe Fields, right? You know who he is? Yeah, I do. He is like the silent version of Chuck Rosansky. He has done almost as much, if not more, for the comic industry, but he is not anywhere near as out there as a you know carnival barker the way that Chuckles is. He he's won Eisner's, he's won humanitarian awards. I mean, he was basically the creator of Free Comic Book Day. I've never actually heard anybody say anything bad about Joe Field at no. all. No, seems like a nice guy. Loves no, he's, he he seems like a really great guy that has done a lot for comic books in general. He. He has been a massive advocate for the the medium, for superhero comics, trying to grow readership to have that next generation of of readers coming in. He's a great guy, and it's it's sad to see market contraction affecting him. He's got to be what in his sixties, maybe. Yeah, he's had the shop for for thirty five years. Let's get to these details, Doc. Mm-hmm. Flying Colors Comics, which is operated by Joe Field, the creator of Free Comic Book Day, appeared to announce it will be shutting down following its 35th anniversary event this upcoming weekend. In a Facebook post, the comic shop invited customers to stop by the store for its upcoming 35th anniversary event on October 7th, where they will be serving Hulk Smash Brownies, giving away commemorative exclusive art print, and hosting Jeff Bonnevert for a signing. Following this, the post states, honestly, and maybe a bit sadly, there aren't likely any more milestone anniversaries for this shop in this location. So this photo of the shop at night is maybe a little reflective of the state of things as they currently are. Now, perhaps he's shutting down altogether, or perhaps he's moving to a more cost efficient uh, shop. Maybe it's too big. He's going to have to move locations. But either way, that's just, uh, I don't know, it, it kind of breaks my heart. It's just, it just makes me feel really really sad for the state of comic books that people that have put so much blood, sweat and tears and benefited so many other people, not only just retailers, publishers, but obviously the readers themselves, you know, are struggling in this climate where we're seeing a lot of people having to shut down extra shops and stuff. I don't want to think the worst out of this posting. Uh, it is very cryptic. He didn't seem to really imply that he'd be closing. He doesn't believe it'll be in this location. So maybe he's going to, to downsize. Maybe he's going to move to a different site. Maybe it's a better site. I, I don't want to think the worst here. There's a lot of ways that this could go, but either way, it just, it rings a familiar sentiment from what we've seen posted over and over and what we've heard uh, from retailers online, even people like our, our friend Yule talking about how it's been a difficult past year or two. It didn't seem like a very celebratory post. It seemed more like, a pre-obituary and that's the sad part the way i took it is sometime in the next 12 months best case scenario they're going to be moving locations worst case scenario is obviously would be going out of business or something like that and you know at some point you know marvel and dc are going to have to react to this stuff they're going to have actually have to show that they care about these shops they have to show that they care about their business partners and do something to actually get people excited because obviously the status quo that's been established since the COVID shutdown and then reopenings and all that has been a net negative basically across the board. There's no excitement in comic books anymore because there just aren't a lot of great books out there. Right now, Batman sucks. Right now, Amazing Spider-Man sucks. Right now, you know, X-Men sucks. You know, Superman's pretty good, but that's really the only tentpole that feels like it's got any life to it right now. We've seen it from retailers across the board talking about how there is no excitement from the readership, there is no excitement in the storylines. Look, you need to get people excited to come into the comic shop if you want the comic shop to be there. So the publishers are absolutely going to have to do something soon and not just throw another fucking event at people. Make good comic books that people want to read on a month-to-month -month basis. They're going to get them coming in the door weekly. That's where the industry needs to go, and they're not doing it. And this isn't the first time we've heard this. We've certainly seen a lot of these things. If indeed Flying Colors Comics is announcing its closing, as the post seems to imply, it's the second biggest store to close down in as many months. JHU Comic Books announced they were closing down at the end of August, posting to Facebook. 
After 10 years of operating in Manhattan and decades before that as Jim Hanley's universe, JHU Comic Books will be closing the Manhattan location at the end of September. The store explained the decision, rising costs have forced JHU to make this choice, and they have decided that the best way to continue to serve New York City comic fans is to focus on the operations of the flagship location located at uh, Staten Island. So there specifically, JHU is saying it's rising costs, and that's certainly another big issue here. It's the, the quality really isn't there, and it certainly doesn't, doesn't justify the cost, but we see Marvel just raising, raising, raising prices. It's absolutely insane. We're almost at the average Marvel Comics costing $5 by the end of 2023. Look, and whenever they raise the cover price, it also raises the cost for the retailers. Yes, theoretically, it would raise their profits, but at the same time, they're going to be moving less issues because people are going to be abandoning books. I think Aaron Sparrow put it the best. It is a death spiral right now of this constantly raising everything. It eventually wipes out the comic shop. You don't need them anymore because there's not enough customer base to support it. Now, let's not overstate this. A lot of these announcements are merely of contractions. They are not like, you yeah, know, Brian Hibbs shut down one of his locations. He still has the other one. JHU Comics shut down a location. They have another one. I do not believe there's another location for Flying Colors Comics, but it sounds more likely that it's going to be changing location rather than uh, just shutting down altogether. At least it, that's what it sounds like right now. I, I know that the 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 default kind of knee jerk reaction to this is to say that these stores are closing or that these longtime retailers are going out of business. They're merely contract. Does that make it better? No, it really doesn't. But let's just make sure we're all intellectually honest on this. And contraction is just as much a bad thing for the, the retailer space as them going out of business completely. Yeah, just, um, you know, it just really sucks. And I, I love people always tell me, no, comic books are great because I read a comic book that I like. Hey, listen, I read comic books that I like every day. But I can tell just by, by the tenor of comic book shop owners, by the tenor of comic book fans, but for the most part, you know, diehard comic book fans are displeased basically across the board. And that's the real problem. It's not what you like personally. How is everything doing? It doesn't feel like anything right now is really healthy. It's not on the path towards something healthy because a lot of the publishers aren't even accepting that the things that they're doing are wrong at this point, much less trying to figure out solutions that aren't just to double, triple, and quadruple down on the short-term sales gimmickry bullshit they've been pulling for the last eight years, created a, a, a marketplace where there is no excitement. You know, instead of doing seven events this year, they're going to do nine. Instead of 11 variants for this relaunch, we're going to do 15. And instead of relaunching every 12 issues, we're going to start relaunching every nine. Instead of three copies to the same reader, they've now sold five copies to the same reader. And the average cost of a number one issue from Marvel Comics is $6 now. Yeah. Just a regular character that nobody really cares about, a number one issue is now $5 instead of 4 If it's a character that you really care about, a primetime character, it's $7 for a number one. Unless it's Jonathan Hickman, for some reason it's $10. And they're absolutely taking it out of your ass because they know that the stories that they're creating will have no retainability associated with them. People will not come back. They come in for the, for the number one issue, for the covers, and they walk right out because the stories suck. And it feels like they're willing accomplices. They're participating in this and almost uh, celebrating it as their new business plan. Exactly. And none of it solves the problem of sustainability. None of it solves the problem of getting foot traffic in on a week-to-week -week basis. None of it solves the problem of a dwindling readership that is selling more and more copies of the exact same book with a different cover slapped on the outside to a shrinking audience at a higher page or at a higher price per unit. None of it solves yeah. any of those problems. And all you're doing is creating a, an environment where you're going to continue to exacerbate the exact same problems that are leading you. If you want to speed up and accelerate the demise, this is a great way to do it. And now it's not just some nameless comic book retailer. You know, a lot of times we do hear about comic book shops shutting down. You're like, well, I'm not really sure who that is. You know, it sucks for them. But this time there is a name. There is a face to this because this is somebody that's actually accomplished a ton in comic books. 
Obviously, Free Comic Book Day was originally conceived by Joe Field of Flying Color Comics in his monthly column in Krauss Publications, Comics and Games Retailer Magazine. Joe and Libby Field received the 1995 Will Eisner Spirit of Comics Award for Retailing Excellence, a Hall of Fame award recognized internationally among comic book professionals. Joe Fields was the first interim president of Comics Pro. He was also the advertising director for WonderCon. Joe Field received the 2014 Bob Clampett Humanitarian Award, which had been given to industry giants like Jack Kirby, Ray Bradbury, Neil Gaiman, and Will Eisner. This isn't a nobody, folks. This is somebody... I wouldn't call him royalty, but he's certainly somebody that has a lot of respect within the retailer community itself. And if he's going to go down, who else is going to go down while we're doing this? Exactly. Um, this is one where the publishers need to take notice. I mean, but we know what they're going to do. They're going to excuse it with, well, that particular town or city that he's in. Well, it's shrinking demographics. Oh, well, he's getting older and he just wants to downsize. They're going to find some way to not blame themselves for the situation that they've put this guy that is a giant among retailers. Um, they're going to find a way to make it not their fault and that they had no, absolutely no way that they contributed to this current situation because, well, that's what these publishers do. As we mentioned, this isn't the first big time comic book shop to be shutting down recently. And we don't know that he's shutting down. He's more likely moving locations and downsizing. But obviously, JHU comic book shutting down was a big deal. Mark Miller was out there talking about it. And it's like, hey, Marvel, DC, you need to take notice about this. I made a video about it asking how many comic book shops actually need to die before Marvel and DC do anything about any of this stuff. Absolutely gross stuff going on right now. There's also a link in the video description. 